By the way, I do, I do want to mention uh, Dan Graziano is the senior NFL national reporter. Uh, he came out with a column yesterday predicting uh, who's going to fill all the vacancies. I'm just curious what you think, uh, John. Um, for the Atlanta Falcons, his prediction is Belichick. Okay. For the Panthers, um, Brian Callahan. That the court, one of the coordinators in uh, Cincinnati? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Las Vegas uh, Raiders, he says they're going to just keep Pierce. Yeah. For the Los Angeles Chargers, he says Harbaugh. There's a ton of smoke around the situation. Harbaugh is known to be a fan of Justin Herbert, and the Chargers are a team desperate for both attention and wins as they work to establish a foothold in L.A. Unless Michigan can entice Harbaugh to stay put, this feels like the most likely landing spot for him. Um, Interesting. Seattle. Vrabel. Vrabel, yeah. Tennessee. Aaron Glenn. Going defense to defense. Washington. Please. Washington. Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. I could see that being a good landing spot for for Ben. Um, oh, it would be, it would be number, magic to have two Johnsons there. <laughs> and and he remember. does a really good job of switching between the run and the pass. <laughs> I, know. I just put that on a team. <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, the magic would love. You know, Aaron Glenn's that. personality, you know, even though Rabel's not there, he fits that Tennessee the way they always play, tough. And the- yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and but but getting back to Ben Johnson in Washington, um, they're gonna have the number two overall pick, and he'd get to select his quarterback, or he'd get a chance to look at what they have and say, Do I like this or not? Right, maybe uh, Sam Hill, uh, Sam Howell, Sam Howell. Yeah. you know, uh, uh, Jacoby Brissett, right, is also in Washington, I yeah, believe. He's the, yeah, he's the, the backup, yeah, yeah, and uh, they'll it'll be Drake May, I would assume, because I assume Caleb's gonna go number one, right, whether um, it's gonna be the Bears or not, which I think it will be, I don't know. Again, yeah, have no idea. There's a lot, lot to happen between now and then. But I think that'd be a good spot for him to to be able to mold his quarterback, his offense. Um, I mean, the other question is, I, I'm not hearing his name in terms of head coaching opportunities. But where does Eric Bieniemy end up as an OC? Maybe Ben Johnson keeps him. I don't know, or whoever the head coach is. I don't know. Yeah, possibly. But his name is not being mentioned at all. You know, one of the things that hasn't got mentioned with the Chiefs offense struggling this year is that. Eric yes. Bieniemy's not like, been there. Yeah. How I mean, much did that, that, does that matter? I mean, we don't know, but you've got to think it's got had some impact. True. Yeah. And, and, and so, Although he the, never he didn't drop passes, though. But, but here's the issue. <laughs> no, but, but you, you think about, okay, if this is Andy Reid's offense, fine. But your offensive coordinator is, you know, they're going to have a say in how things are going at practice. One of the complaints from – the commander's practice and some of their offensive players was that Eric Bieniemy demanded too much of them. Aww. I know, and, and, and that's my reaction as well. But now all of a sudden you look and you say, okay, well, what's going on in Kansas City? You've got drop passes. You've got penalties, like penalties where you're not paying attention. You're lining up offsides. Part of that might be that Eric Bieniemy, Bieniemy is not there demanding Perfection at practice. And he wouldn't allow Travis Kelsey to date Taylor Swift. <laughs> Not a Michigan. There's some tech, ticket text. Not a Michigan fan, but even if I was, I'd say Ben Johnson. I'm already nervous about next year. Okay, by the way, you have a playoff game on Sunday. Don't even think about next year. Well, About being nervous yet? Okay, next year, yes. All of those well, things will take care of themselves right. after the Super Bowl. Right. I mean... Don't worry about any of that stuff right now. But the concern is because we are in this coaching cycle. Right, he's going to have interviews that, tomorrow. Yeah, and and but the, the, I don't. He can interview as much as he wants. I don't think that's a distraction to no, him he, or no, the team. Neither do I. The, where I'm going with this though is you had a team, the Philadelphia Eagles, that were in the Super Bowl last year. What happened? They lost to both coordinators. And all of a sudden this year, they got to a certain point. And even when they were 10 and 1, nobody thought that this was the same team as last year. Personnel wise, yes, they weren't, but they weren't playing on either side of the ball like they had in 22. Right. Now, one of their coordinators who they lost to become the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, most people in Philadelphia couldn't, they couldn't get him out of there fast. He, people hated him. They thought he was an awful coordinator, even though they went to the Super Bowl. They went to the Super Bowl. Right. And, well, and both of them proved to be pretty good. Like, they outperformed, I think, expectations in Arizona. They also way outperformed in Indianapolis. True. I mean, the Eagles' first problem this year rooted back to on the field, their secondary and middle of their defense. 
on the back. It was yes. awful. It never got better. But no. then we went to Matt Patricia, and uh, they allow 28 points per game the rest of the year. I mean, anybody that ever tried to just say it wasn't all Patricia's fault here, I think we've had it confirmed that it was. Yeah, it was a lot. Definitely the majority. Um, speaking of uh, defensive coaches, if some team hires Aaron Glenn, they'd be doing the Lions a favor. The last time I checked, the Lions secondary stinks. Okay, I kind of agree that the Lions secondary stinks. I kind of think it's just as much, if not more, on the players than it is Aaron Glenn. Yeah, there there are there are some deficiencies in talent. Yes. I'll say this. I, I would I would love for Aaron Glenn to get a head coaching job. I'd like to see the Lions have a different de- defensive coordinator. I, I can't tell me what it, what do they do good? Well they're they've gotten better they're in, really good at stopping the run. Yes. Okay. They're excellent Fair. at stopping the run. Really Fair. good. Yeah, they're like yeah. the top five at stopping and the run. In the and last five weeks of the season since Denver, the, it, they've been creative as to how they've pressured the quarterback. Secondary is still a major issue. But I think some of the secondary issues is like we had just mentioned. It's a lack of it's a lack of loft. Yes. Let me to, ask to you, go it's, full it's loft. Loft. Yeah. I'll put it this way. As long as you get a really good coordinator to replace him, Jesse Minner. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. I what if Harbaugh leaves and uh, and doesn't know, take him with him? Glenn, get, Glenn gets a job. Who would you rather have your D.C., Minner or Glenn? I'm putting you in a real tough spot. I, I'd, yeah, I, I'd, I, say, I I'd say Minter. Yeah. Because I mean, he you, does you, have NFL experience, he too. He does, yeah, at Baltimore. Um, and you you, you got to love how Baltimore's – one of their trademarks is they always play really good defense. Yes. Um Ben Johnson over everyone. He's the mastermind behind our offensive production. Sharon Moore can step in for hardball. We wouldn't skip a beat. We can also get a defensive coordinator that can produce the same output. Ben Johnson, we would lose quite a bit of production, and those third and medium fourth down calls would take a hit. Okay, that's true. However, maybe if you had a different uh, offensive coordinator, your third quarter performances would be better too. Well, there's <laughs> – yes, there's – there's there's the the, the – I'm not sure, and Gov, you and I have talked about this off air a lot. We've talked about it a little bit on air. How much of this offense, because when they fired Anthony Lynn and Dan Campbell took over, what happened to the offense? It got it got better. Right. And how much of this offense is influenced by Dan Campbell? And Ben Johnson's the one making the play calls I'm, on Sunday. But I'm sure Dan Campbell's it's pretty equal, if not with game planning, though. Right, yeah. So he, it, it, this is Dan Campbell's offense. Yes. Inherited from Sean Payton. Mm -hmm. Now, if you lose Ben Johnson and you bring in another coordinator, I think Dan now knows more having hired Anthony Lynn, fired him, and then promoted Ben Johnson, what he's looking for in a coordinator, in a guy that will listen to him and perform what he wants and what he wants to see from his offense. See, I think just quick on this, though. I believe if, if the Lions are truly trying to do the Steeler Raven thing, which they've kind of admitted they have, where you're always you know, competitive. Those teams, coordinators go out the door. They come in and they go out. And once in a while, they make a bad one. They yeah, they like can- Canada. Yeah, exactly. But they get away from it and they always fix the problem. And and I don't, I, if that's what the Lions are trying to do, they'll be just fine replacing coordinators. All right, 